Aloha, top of the morning friends and family. On this channel, once a week, we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece. This video is uncut. And in today's uncut video, I just wanted to take a moment to open up this envelope that my good friend Vanessa over at US Arc, who is just a ray of sunshine every time I see her. Um, thank you to her for sending this to me. This is the Reptiles Magazine issue. And the reason I wanted to make this video was A, just to have a moment to honor Brian Barczyk, who we all very, miss very much. And also share with those of you who might be like me and no longer um, receive magazines with the advent of in internet and all that stuff. Uh, if you're one of those people like me that does that, then you probably don't have this either. So I wanted to read it and share it with you. Even though I'm sure it's available online. I, I just wanted to open this and read it. A lot of you have probably seen, probably seen the cover already. I know I saw it somewhere on social media. Um, but there it is. There it is. I'm going to just get in there. I'm going to read it. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. In loving memory of Brian Barczyk, September 1969 to January 2024. <laughs> it's a classic face right there. It's a classic Brian face. <laughs> it's so classic. Uh, it's a classic shot. So I'm guessing that means it's on 16. Oh, it was an interview. His last interview. They've got some stuff here from on the editor's desk, um, which big kudos to Reptiles Magazine for putting this stuff out. We've got a page on page 25. There's thoughts from some of Brian's fans. Got a whole whole bunch of stuff in here. Look, there's Jeremy, U.S. Ark. Kind of with Brian and the picky. Random trips to Home Depot. <sighs> yeah, there's a there's a lot in here. Actually, which is great. I I didn't know I didn't know what it what it was honestly. I just knew that. He was on the cover, and Vanessa asked if I had one. I said no, and she said, well, I'll make sure you get one. And it's one of Jay's pictures. I don't know if I'll just read the interview or there's a picture of when he opened the Reptarium back in 2018. Got to be there, of course, to help out with or see it when it was still being built and help paint some of the little edges of the enclosures and stuff. Uh, wow, I might have picked a bad time to come out here. I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. I've been getting eaten alive by mosquitoes for a week. My whole goal in life is to leave a legacy for people to see how much I love these animals and how much I hope others do too. And I think I wanted to do this today because I I did an educational show today with kids. It's two year old two years old to five years old. A really cool group. It was like an adult school um daycare center. It was really cool and it was fun and I thought about filming it, and I did one last week too at my kids' school, and it was fun just to interact with the kids. And I decided that when I do those, I'm, I'm just gonna keep it about me, the animals, and the kids, and not not bring you along. So my apologies for that, but I, I just really enjoyed that moment. I don't want to take away from it by by bringing the cameras in it. Um, we've been fortunate to do be doing those again. Um, looking to do as many as I possibly can, because of that right there. Just just getting to see the glow on those kids' faces, like like Brian said. Uh, in the world of YouTube influencers, Brian Barczyk is considered to be the original architect 
Brian began posting YouTube content in 2008, and his channel has not only stood the test of time, but has since grown to more than 5.43 million subscribers, with more than 2.9 thousand videos at the time of this writing. In addition, these numbers do not include his other social media platforms. Brian's breeding operation, BHV Reptiles, located in Utica, Michigan, has been around for decades. In 2018, Brian opened the Reptarium, 6,000 square foot reptile focused zoo, also located in Utica. Um, the Reptarium houses an amazing assortment of animals, and tens of thousands of visitors come through its doors to visit every year. Brian's zoo is also unique in that it allows for live interaction with many of the facility's animals. In addition to reptiles, Brian also has a love of fish and has begun to construct a public aquarium. Having, tra having traveled the world, Brian has made multiple trips to Africa, Australia, and other countries. Brian makes it known that his mission in life is to get people to love reptiles and other animals. Mission well done, sir. Uh, having traveled the world, Brian has made multiple trips to Africa, Australia, and other countries. Oh, I read that already. All in all, it could be said that Brian has led a life that most reptile enthusiasts could only dream of. Touche. Uh, in March 2023, after several weeks of doctor visits, because of sudden onset back pain, Brian was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Less than a week later, after several additional tests, Brian was informed that his cancer was inoperable. This news hit the herpetological community like an avalanche, with Brian and his family receiving an outpouring of support from across the globe. On January 14th, 2024, Brian passed. This interview was conducted in April 2023. I think I'll, I'll just read this page for you guys. Um, and I can only imagine that you're able to read these articles if you want to check out all this stuff. And this picture him with Mr. Beast and... Dude did some big stuff. It's been, it's been really interesting picking up the camera for the last while, you know, being that he was the main inspiration for me. There are others. Dave Kaufman, Mike Wilbanks, Kevin McCurley, um, probably a couple others that I watched on YouTube that I'm forgetting. There was one guy, Triple H or something, not not the wrestler Triple H, but like some reptile channel that was out there that I watched a bunch of it that got deleted. Uh, maybe you guys leave a comment below. Maybe you can leave a comment below and let me know if you remember that channel I'm talking about. Um, Granddaddy Herps, uh, Jay Boa. There's a lot of guys that I watched on YouTube, and I was like, oh, I want to make some videos. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just read this page of the interview. Hello, Brian. Thank you very much for... Actually, it sounds weird to read it. Because <laughs> these, these, these guys talking. I don't know. For some reason, it feels weird for me to read it out loud. No, I'll do it anyway. Hello, Brian, and thank you very much for agreeing to participate in this interview. You obviously have a lot going on. However, for those readers who may be unfamiliar with all of your videos, can you tell us a little bit about your early interest in reptiles, fish, and other animals? Brian says, Ever since I was two years old when I visited a local aquarium and saw all the fish and a ball python, I have been obsessed. I remember that day still and remember being in awe of the ball python, not to mention some huge fish that they had on display. I knew at that moment I wanted to spend my life around animals, and I never really have wanted anything else as I grew up. Um, did you keep any reptiles or amphibians as a child? Brian says, My mom was terrified of reptiles, so she would not allow any snakes or lizards in the house. So every summer from when I was about five years old, I would collect snakes and tadpoles every day from the woods right down the street from my house and keep them in the family garage. I would dig worms up to feed to the snakes and fed the tadpoles flake fish food until they metamorphosed into little toads. <laughs> Very familiar story. I would say on an average year, I would have about 30 snakes and about 200 to 300 tadpoles. I was always sad on the fall day when my mom would make me release the snakes I had cared for all summer. Although the winters were long without my scaly friends, I knew each year I would be back to collect more again. Ah. That's good. That's good. Just wanted to take that moment to just read a little bit out of that article for you guys like I said in case you hadn't known about it and I'm sure most of you have but just felt like opening it up and sharing this moment with you guys so it's also a really good article about Aki monitor Karen here too so 
<sighs> I do miss the days of magazines and flipping through the pages and it's kind of a, lo a lost art for me. Should maybe bring it back. Anyway, yeah, I hope, hope you're having a great day. Hope you're going to continue to have a great day. And I think it's going to do it for me. I've got some really exciting clutches hatching in the snake room, which I will be sharing with you guys soon on the next video. And until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other. We'll see you on the next video. Aloha.